Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. For this Frugal Friday, I'm gonna show you how you can reclaim pastel scraps and turn them into your very own hand-rolled pastels. It's a very easy process and it's great because when you have little scraps or you've got, maybe you broke some pastels, it's a great way to turn them back into a usable product. And you can also make some really interesting mixes. So I had some, just some broken, um, kind of brittle uh, pastel pieces and I thought that I would kind of see what I got. So I've got some greens and greenish blue colors there and I'm putting them in a mortar and pestle, so a mortar, I guess this is a pestle. And the first thing you're gonna do is grind everything up here. Now, it might be a good idea to wear a mask to do this, but I don't find this stuff to be all that dusty and flying around, but you know, of course, you, um, you want to take your own precautions, whatever you feel comfortable with. And these are going to grind down pretty easy. Now, I made the mistake the first time I did this, to, and I added water to the the uh, the mortar when I was doing this. And that was a mistake because that just made everything clump up and be difficult to grind down. But as you can see, this is going to grind down pretty easily. I'm just going to kind of stir this up and see if I have any unmixed up parts. I think I'll give it another quick grind. I mean, and this is, we're not making these from scratch. We're recycling or upcycling, I should say, broken pastel shards and um, bits and pieces. And you might have a pastel color that you absolutely hate. Maybe you want to, you know, mash it down and mix it with something else to make something that you would find more useful. I love stuff like this. I love when I can, you know, avoid wasting a product. And uh, yeah, these are, these are fun. These are fun to make. You could also save like the dust if you keep a little dust catcher under your easel, like on your easel tray, you could, you know, make some gray pastels with that. So what I'm going to do is just dump this right onto a silicone mat and scrape this out really well. I actually have a smaller pal palette knife I'll use for scraping this out so I don't waste any. And plus I want to get as much out of here as I can so that way, you know, I don't run it, you know, when I clean this out, I don't rinse it down the drain. So, you know, what I would do is I would just save the pastel scraps together, either in like little jars or, um, I guess you keep them right, like I had mine right in my pastel drawer and then I just fished through and pulled out the little tiny um, scrapings, the little tiny shards. But, you know, however you can keep them together so that when you want to have a pastel making day, you could like maybe do with like one color family, like I could do blue and then I could do greens you know, then I could clean it, then I could do, you know, yellows, and I could do oranges, and then I might be able to do reds, I might have to clean it. But you know what I mean? I could work kind of like going color friend to color friend, like around the color wheel, and that way I wouldn't have to clean up quite so often. So look at this, we have quite a good amount of dust there. So what I'm going to do is I've got some uh, sterile water here, or it's actually water that I've boiled. So basically what I'll do is, um, after I make tea, I will take the, um, I'll just kind of dump the tea kettle water into a jar and then I'll have that for whenever I need really sterile water. I'm going to put just uh, three drops of gum arabic. I don't even think I need this because these were pastels, but because they were very brittle pastels, I thought I could probably use a little bit more gum arabic just to, you know, keep the pastel from um, moving around, you know, from cr crumbling again like it did the first time. Um, I might be able to get a couple of sticks out of this. And you could do this on like, um, you know, if you didn't have a silicone mat, you could do this on a, you know, uh, anything non-porous really. You could use wax paper, but it will chew through the wax paper. So just to uh, let you know, parchment paper. This is going to wipe right off though. So this is a nice, a nice uh, thing to use. I don't want to put too much water in it because I'm going to be um, rolling this into a stick and I really don't want it to be really sticky. <laughs> I want it to be kind of go into almost like a clay. Pastel is made from pigments, clay, and binder in general. And so, you know, what you want is kind of like a clay consistency. I might need a little bit more water to make it stick together. And I mean, tap water is probably fine. To be honest, I mean, it's not like you're gonna, these are gonna, you're gonna let these dry out. So, I mean, it's probably fine. But I figured out, why not? I've got the, uh, I've got the tea kettle right there. Might as well do that. And I heard that you're not supposed to reboil water 
um, because it can concentrate all the minerals that are in your water and we have a well so I'm like oh you know that's probably not a bad idea to, to do that. Gum Arabic can be purchased uh, any place that sells watercolor supplies. Uh, I think I got my bottle off Jerry's Autorama. Blick has it. You might you probably can get it on Amazon too, although it'll be more expensive. And you can also get a powdered form, which would probably be fine in this case since you're adding water to it anyway. Um, I prefer the liquid form. Anytime I've ever had like mold issues with some sort of handmade art supply I've made, it's always been because of the uh, powdered gum arabic. Okay, wow, we've got a good, a good amount there. I'm going to take a piece of wax paper now. And I am going to scoop this up into a kind of a line on there. It is, it is quite wet. I kind of wish it was a little bit drier, but. I don't think that will permanently stain my mat. This is a Jane Davenport paint to faint silicone mat. I don't really care for this wax paper that much either. I don't even know where I got it. Probably Dollar Tree or something. It doesn't, it's not very waxy, but it will suffice for this. Get the extra off of there. And what I want to do is just kind of try to, it might be a little too wet to roll. I'm trying to think, I'd like to just kind of roll it up in the paper. some point you gotta get your fingers yeah this is too wet to roll up so I'm gonna have to let that dry out a little bit before I can roll that into a pastel try to form it up a little bit yeah yeah that's gonna dry um, we'll let this dry out a bit and then we'll come back and we will I'll show you how to roll this up. It's pretty easy. It's just like rolling up some Play-Doh. All right, this is dried up a bit. I did actually add a little more ground up uh, pigment to it just to uh, help it dry up a bit because it was taking forever and got that pretty well mixed in. So actually I think I can probably just do this right here on the silicone mat if it was like too sticky you could put it in the like a wax paper and just kind of use the help the you can let the wax paper kind of help you roll it up so you don't get it all over your hands if that's if that bothers you especially with some of these darker color oh that's nice especially some of these darker colors that could be a bit um, a bit more staining Kind of like rolling sushi. We might be able to pick up some of the extra, the extra um, powder. Look at that. I think I might cut that into two. Um, oh, I might try to pick up some of those extra crumbs. Yeah, I think I'll cut that into two. Look at that. And then you just want to set it to dry somewhere. Ah, isn't that cool? And then I've got this one here that's all ready. Well, pretty, pretty well dry. One here I made yesterday. I used a variety of different like purples. The more um, gum arabic you add, the harder of a pastel you'll get. The less gum arabic you add, if you don't add any gum arabic and you just use the binder that's in the pastels that you had, you'll have a, a pastel that's a similar firmness to what you um, what you made the pastels from. So that's completely up to you. If you but if you want a harder stick, like I know a lot of people like to use new pastels. New pastels are they've discontinued the um, uh, they've discontinued them. Like you could make skinnier sticks. You know, you could use your palette if you could make it like yeah, I want to have a skinnier stick that I can draw with. You know, you could do that, definitely, and just let them dry. I don't think I want to do that. I think I'm going to roll that back into a, back into a stick. You can make chunky sticks like Unison pastels if you want to. It's completely up to you. So you have fun recycling or upcycling. I guess I would say upcycling. Upcycling your pastels. And, um, you know, play with the shape, play with the sizes. And it's great to know that you don't have to throw away those crumbs and that dust. You can 
you can uh, use it or something. You could recycle the dust on the tray of your easel, and that would be great for like maybe blocking in large sketches or something, tonal, tonal drawings, when you just want to get a drawing and then you want to either use oil paint over it or, or use pastel over it just to block in stuff. That's a, another good thing you can do with these. So have fun, recycle, and uh, yeah, get every last drop out of your supplies. You bought and paid for them, you might as well use them and save all the money you can and and say and use your resources wisely that's all i have for today thank you so much for watching and until next time happy crafting